I'm a bit late for the NDA lift date, but I mean, better late than never, right? Gravistar, a company that you're probably more familiar with for their more, you know, bizarre speakers, earbuds, chargers, and whatnot. And they sent me their gaming mouse, the Mercury M2, to evaluate. And I mean, just looking at the box, I can tell you that this is definitely going to be the most unique mouse that I've gotten my hands onto. And I, I honestly can't wait to tell you guys all about it. So let's get into it. So yes, this is definitely the strangest gaming mouse that I've ever received here on Tech Rodent. The Mercury M2 just looks like some kind of weird alien life form, you know, like a mix of this skeletal beetle looking aesthetic with a glowing abdomen together with a little bit of that, you know, venom symbiote kind of feel. This structure, of course, allowed Gravistar to shave off quite a bit of weight of it, weighing in at 80 grams. It's got five customizable buttons and you can use it wirelessly wired via the paracord cable or via Bluetooth. At the heart of the Mercury M2 sits a Pixar PAW3395 sensor, which is capable of up to 26,000 CPI, 650 inches per second and 50 grams of acceleration. As mentioned before, you can use it wirelessly and the wireless dongle that tucks neatly under the mouse is powered by Gravistar's TurboSpeed wireless technology which has a 1kHz polling rate and I'm really pleased to see that Gravistar not only put effort into theming the body of their mouse but also the dongle that comes with it. That's attention to detail. The switches on this mouse use what look like KOGM 8.0 micro switches. And I had to find this out for myself because Gravistar doesn't list this on their website. So I had to take the mouse apart, starting with the two Torx screws visible from the bottom, uh, followed by another nine hidden beneath the feet, two more that are accessible with the shell removed, and two more that are hidden under the regulations and certifications sticker. Something tells me that this mouse wasn't really designed to be taken apart because that's a lot of screws. Did I also mention that the scroll wheel is also themed with the mouse? Because yes, the scroll wheel is also themed similarly with the mouse, which is honestly pretty cool of Gravistar. And well, more importantly, they have some pretty satisfying steps. There's also a button below that to swap between the profiles on the mouse. Now, I would say that this is more of a subjective matter, but surprisingly to me, despite the more uh, skeletal nature of the mouse, it was still heavier than my daily driver, the Cooler Master MM731. So that was a bit of a surprise and, well, disappointment because while some people might not like their mice too light, I do, so that's up to you. Either way, for me, it was just a matter of getting used to before I got comfortable enough with the weight. While we're on this topic of weight and movements, if you find that the feet on the mouse are a bit high friction, do not forget to remove the protective film of the Teflon feet. Yeah, I, I totally didn't make that mistake and the mouse glides a lot smoother when you do. The shape of the mouse is, I would say, pretty ergonomic. A claw grip user like myself didn't really have that much trouble getting used to it, but if you do find the mouse a bit too slippery for your liking, then of course you could stick on some of the provided grip tape. Moving on to software, while for the most part it works pretty flawlessly, I had issues setting one of the mouse's buttons to Out F4, as when I restart the software, it just shows Out and Blank. And yeah, I tried doing it with macros instead, but I ran into the same issue, except that this time, Left Out didn't show up as well. Uh, so yeah, I contacted Gravistar about this and we worked together to resolve this issue and so far the macro functionality seems to be fixed so here's hoping their combo x functionality gets fixed soon as well but no doubt that this is a small issue so i'm not too concerned by it via the software you can also adjust the lighting modes of the mouse and each profile so you can personalize the mouse to however you desire I have to say as well that bits of their software do suffer from bad English translation, but again, this doesn't bother the functionality of the software and is just a little bit of nitpicking. Moving on to gaming, I was pleasantly surprised with the Mercury M2. 
My game of choice right now is Ready or Not, and in a game like this where reaction time is paramount against dangerous and volatile suspects, I found myself being able to react and flick towards my targets with great accuracy, leading me to perform really well and neutralize my targets effectively. For those of you who do not know, I prefer using my mouse at about 2000 CPI, and of the issues I find quite common with cheaper mice is the inability for them to pick up my micro hand movements, and I'm talking about like sub 1mm of hand movement, yes I do do those kinds of movements. Most of the cheaper wireless mice that I've tested isn't able to pick up these minuscule movements of my hand, but the Gravistar M2 is able to do it quite well, allowing me to do stuff like this. Neutralizing a suspect holding a hostage at range with a shotgun to the head. Interestingly, as a battery saving measure, the RGB lights of the abdomen, <laughs> yeah, they don't light up until you stop moving the mouse, at which they will turn off after a couple of seconds. Pretty smart if you ask me, as you won't notice the RGB lights anyway when you're using the mouse and you know your hand is covering it. The 400 mAh battery inside of it is sitting at about 41% after a week's use and gaming. So yeah, if you're a light user, you can probably expect to charge it every fortnight, not the game, two weeks. But if you're actively gaming all day, then maybe about a week. Now, interestingly, on Gravistar's website, they've got a blog post that talks about this mouse being the best cheap gaming mouse of 2024. Priced at about 80 US dollars, I can't say that this is one of the cheapest gaming mice that I've ever used. It is, however, one of the best performing mice that I've used and tested and is most definitely the most unique of them all. That's why to me it's kind of strange that Gravistar's official marketing sells it as a cheap gaming mouse, whereas I would kind of say that it's like a fun statement piece, you know? It's something that definitely looks very different. It'll catch a lot of glances if you're using it out and about in your uni or land tourneys or whatever, if those still exist, and it'll do so without compromising on performance. I think that that's really the biggest selling point for me. The bark really has a bite. That's pretty much it from me for this video. As usual, I'll list purchase links down in the description below as soon as they become available. Purchasing from them usually helps support this uh, little channel of mine, so I do appreciate it. Leave it a like if you liked it, comment down below on what you think about this strange little bug, and don't forget to sub and follow. My name is Yang, the Tech Rodent, and I will see you guys in the next video.